do it without turning the camera, the video off and then turning it on and then the control for, you know, making it look at you instead of the scenery fixes itself. Hi. <sighs> I just love knowing that you guys are going to be watching this and it's like we have a little time together. Um, we haven't for a long time and I really like this way of communicating with you. So anyway, um, I love you all. I think about you all the time and uh, I, never, I never know whether to get on even when I don't feel good, uh, although, even though it'll make people worry, or to stay off when I don't feel good, which people will worry anyway. And of course this time I was sleeping all the time. There wasn't any question of getting on. I barely had time to comb my hair with all the lovely sleeping I was doing. So, uh, Thursday morning, head for Sacramento. Lincoln is the specific town and visiting my friends, Russ and Cheryl, who were part of, who were they? They were the secondary caregivers, circuit riders back up. And uh, beyond, and also along with my stepmom, Kathy, she was also one of the backup people. Um, I thought a little frog was coming across the deck. Uh, so anyway, um, okay, I go to LA uh, from their house on Friday, and I'll be staying for a couple of days with a lovely friend that I met up with a couple of times down uh, in in um, Los Angeles. Her name is Dore, and uh, I'm going to get to spend a couple of days at her house because she lives in Santa Monica, and uh, I don't have to go to the hospital until Monday. So I decided what I would be doing. I had conflicting ideas. Um, I'm going to go to Santa Monica for the first two days because the only thing I have to do the first two days I'm there is uh, rest up for the procedures and then um, get my COVID test uh, on Saturday so that they'll have the result available for me to go to the OR on Monday. Uh, is it Monday? Oh my gosh, that was a little frog. Oh my goodness. I'll see if I can capture it for you. Here, don't get lost. Here, little froggy. Look. Can I make you jump? Hello. I guess not. Maybe it wasn't a frog. Sometimes little leaves <clears throat> that are blown really dry and uh, a little breeze will come up and blow the leaf and it looks like it's a hopping frog. I'll have to review the footage and see what I actually had there. Okay, um, so I'm gonna go and uh, visit Dore at her house and uh, um, We'll end up doing something, going out to dinner or whatever we need, whatever we want to do. She lives right above Pacific Palisades, so it's a great place to take a walk, and she likes to take walks, so we'll go and do that, hopefully, and and hit a good restaurant. And uh, then on Saturday, I'll get my COVID test, and then we'll have another night at her house. And then on Sunday evening, I'll move to the hotel that is closest to the hospital. And um, I'll stay there and get a shuttle to the hospital the next day. And um, then uh, I have uh, my appointment with um, Dr. Saya, and he's gonna do what basically, he, when I was going to clinics, you remember that? I'd say today's a clinic day. Well, that's a bunch of lab tests. And they look at all the lab tests and you, you know, you get them done and it starts at like six o'clock in the morning and you go to lab, radiology, pulmonary function lab, and there's one more. <laughs> Maybe there isn't. That might be it. Oh, um, CT scan. I've got a CT scan. So uh, that's that. And then at nine o'clock or 10 o'clock, I meet, maybe even a little later than that, I meet with Dr. Saya, and uh, then from there, 
we meet up again over at the surgery building and um, they do my bronchoscopy where they take the samples of my lung that got transplanted and see if there's any sign of infection or rejection. And I'm gonna guess that it isn't because the things that have been bothering me have been not at all related to breathing. There's a lot of activity around here, birds and everything. Um, so that'll be that scoop. <laughs> um, and let's see. Okay, so I get the bronchoscopy and then they make you like get your wits about you again in the recovery room for like an hour, a little over an hour maybe. And then um, hopefully it works out time-wise. The bronchoscopy is supposed to be over at like two and then the next appointment is my echocardiogram and that starts at three and then I see the cardiologist at four. Um, he doesn't think I have any particular heart problems but when I was in the ICU after the surgery my heart got confused about the rhythm of life and decided to <laughs> decided to bang his drum a different way and uh, on his own and um, they kind of make them get back into the drum line when that happens you can't just if you're a heart you can't just go off and beat a different drum you must conform and so they had they conformed it back to the normal rhythm shortly after my surgery and uh, that was uh, that was good it stayed that way ever since but this is like the six month clearance for the fact that I really don't have any heart problems and it's gonna stay that way I have a little bit of AFib but everybody in my family does and it's never enough to bother me sometimes I don't even feel it they tell me so anyway um after that day, that's the big day. They're so good about scheduling everything in one day. I scheduled one extra day to just sort of do nothing. Just hang out in the room and uh, I don't, all I'll have to do is, at the end of that day, I'll throw all the stuff I brought with me back into the um, my luggage and I'll go uh, I'll be ready. I'll get the car all loaded up and stuff so that I can take advantage of my breakfast that comes free with the room and then I can hit the road back up to Russ and Cheryl's and then I'm staying there a couple days and then I'm coming home. You can tell I'm feeling better because I'm very wordy today and the pauses to catch my where the what do they call that? Oh the belt slipping. And, uh, it is kind of annoying and it makes the tape last longer but hopefully you don't mind I sure would love to be seeing all of your sweet faces in there but don't you love my glasses I love my glasses they are so cool anyway uh, and I still have not had a haircut since I had since well before I had my transplant I don't care do you I'm just going along with it. I mean, really, this is two days without washing and it's still very nice, so, in my opinion. <laughs> okay, you guys, I love you all and I'm alive and happy and on the upswing for sure. Today was a significantly better day, significantly better. And in fact, if I hadn't left it till too close to dark, and I may do it anyway, might be time to take a walk. Okay, kiddos, I'll be on uh, Facebook more often while I feel good. And if I disappear, it's just me listening to my body for once and taking a rest. Um, I promise you, I have something all set up. My, my, uh, I have a couple of different friends that have the password to my page. And if anything happens that I can't post, or, you know, there's an emergency of some sort. Um, or just if I have to go back to the hospital. Did you know that most people within the first year of getting a, a lung transplant have to 
go back to the hospital more than once. I've only gone once while I was still in LA. So don't ever be surprised to hear that I'm back in the hospital. Don't ever be worried if I seem to be sleeping a lot and not getting online as much. I'm here. By the looks of things, if I told you everything that had happened in my life, it appears I'm unbreakable. And if I do end up being breakable, I go live in heaven. So, yeah, life is good. Love you guys. Keep the prayers coming. I, I've just, I really believe that those have an effect and they make me happy and, and uh, make me feel really supported. And every time I hear that somebody still is thinking of me through this whole thing, I don't know, it really, it brings joy to my heart. And know that every time I see your name in any context, I say a prayer for you too. And I think of people out of the, just out of the random and, and it's funny because in way more than one example, if they come to mind and I pray, I end up finding out later that it was needed. I, I, you know, I, nobody even told me a thing. And I just prayed. That's how it goes. Like, uh, there have been a couple of times that I've just had this feeling that circuit rider needed something. And uh, I've used Venmo to make a little donation. And it turned out <laughs> that he really did need something. One particular recent experience, he was down to $1.09 in his checking account. <laughs> And uh, I had no clue because he's been gone for three weeks. And when he's not here, he's communicative, but not too communicative because he's got like, I would really love to sit down and look through his contacts. I am absolutely positive that he's got at least 18, no, excuse me, that he's got at least 8,000 contacts and it might be 10. In the 20 years of this ministry, the guy knows a lot of people so I don't I mean his friends know that if it's uh, if it's a ministry time which now it definitely is he's back on the trail and ministering to people that that uh, uh, in person because he did all his ministry anyway even when we were together and doing that that lung transplant thing any time that he didn't have something he needed to do for me he was making calls and he left a couple times if you remember to go to different things and uh, came back so anyway um, there is something about prayer and there is something about being used by the Lord to help others who are being used by the Lord and I just when I heard that I just laughed so much um, a dollar nine left in his checking account and I had a feeling he needed help I that those times are just so special if you aren't doing any giving and I would even go further to say if you aren't doing any sacrificial giving giving that might hurt a little you feel a little uncertain about it grab the Lord's hand pick somebody that you think really uses the money well and give because there is no happier feeling than just freely giving what you will, and trust me once you start you will have more to give because it's like that when you start giving to others who are giving their resources and life to to help the world like like circuit rider is and it, you don't even have to be involved in you know uh, Christians can give, non-Christians can give too. People who don't give a rip about anything religious can really help the world by giving. And if it's done with the right heart, freely, then there you will always be replenished. You'll always be replenished. And so, you know, I used to give after doing the budget and you know figuring out exactly what I was gonna need and but the Lord provides it's the Lord that provides and 
your faith in the Lord will go through the roof when you start giving even if you may not necessarily be wise in doing so according to the popular uh, wisdom you start doing it and you will give get so much more than you give at whatever level remember that lady with three or four coins to give in the Bible and uh, Jesus called her a uh, uh, a, a giving spirit she had a giving spirit and she was going to get way more back than the person who did it for publicity or because they just had more than they knew what to do with or anything a sacrificial giver gets rewarded way better way better and it just is because they are naturally of happy heart when others are in need to share what they have so um, it, it's not, a lot of people take that and they turn it into something like a vending machine God where if you donate this or do that or sacrifice this, then he'll have to do whatever you want and your prayers have more power. It's always God's will. It's always God's will. He will do with, with what is basically his money. None of it's ours anyway. He, he provides for us. So when you get a, a whim that somebody might need a bit of a hand, that's the most fun way to do it. Anonymously, if you can. But uh, yeah, that was so amazing that time. And you know, he always, when he, when he gets a, a message from me like that with a little something to help his trail be easier, he always gets right in touch with me. And, the, and, and it's a hilarious thing. These so many times that I've given, you know, it, it doesn't take much, you know. And uh, it's like paltry amounts, but it just covers what he needs for that moment. So uh, <laughs> it's so exciting. We laughed until we cried over that, that uh, my Venmo gift came when he had a hundred, a one dollar and nine cents, yeah, one dot oh nine. That was what he had in his checking account after he paid for a big bill that was unexpected. <laughs> oh goodness, what a joy to be part of something like that. His ministry is amazing. But anyway, okay, I just wanted to say hi to you guys because number one, I missed you, and number two, I was starting to get the little messages that say, are you okay? Are you feeling well? You know, what's wrong? So nothing's wrong. It's just life with chronic illness. And I had a three week rough spot. And uh, this week will be more exciting. So I'll get on and tell you stuff about what's happening rather than just getting on every day to say, I slept 19 hours today and tomorrow I hope to sleep 20. <laughs> All right. Love you guys. We'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.